My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, since Doug and Bill, who are your relatives and friends, are now to be ordained to the order of deacon, let's consider the nature of the ministry in the church which they are about to receive. The sacrament of holy orders will strengthen them by the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thus they will help their bishop and his priests in the ministry of the word, in the ministry of the altar, and the ministry of charity. As ministers of the altar, they will proclaim the gospel. They will prepare the sacrifice to be offered to the Father through the Holy Spirit. They will distribute the Lord's body and blood to his faithful people. It will also be their duty to preach to believers and non-believers alike and to instruct them in the holy teachings of the church. As deacons, they will preside over public prayers. They will administer baptism, assist at marriages, bring holy communion to the sick and to the dying, and conduct the funeral rites of the church. Consecrated by the laying on of hands that come down to us through the apostles, they will perform works of charity in the name of the bishop and the pastors. With God's help, they will go about all these duties in such a way that you will recognize them as disciples of Christ who came not to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Doug and Bill, you are about to be ordained to the order of the diaconate. The Lord has set an example for you. As he himself has done, so also you should do. As deacons of Jesus Christ, who came among his disciples as one who served, always do the will of God from your heart. Serve God's people in love and joy as you would serve the Lord himself. And since no one can serve two masters, Look upon all unchastity and avarice as serving false gods. Since you present yourselves for the order of diaconate by your own free choice, you must be men of good reputation. You must be men filled with wisdom in the Holy Spirit as were those first chosen by the apostles for the ministry of charity. You will, of course, exercise your diaconal ministry committed to the celibate state. Be sure of this, that celibacy is both a sign of pastoral charity and an inspiration to pastoral charity. Motivated by a sincere love of Christ and living this state with total dedication, you will adhere to Christ more easily with an undivided heart. You will be more completely free for the service of God and your brothers and sisters in faith and minister more effectively in the work of spiritual rebirth. Firmly rooted in faith, you are to show yourselves chaste and beyond reproach before God and before God's people 
as is proper for the ministers of Christ and the stewards of the mysteries of God. Never turn away from the hope which the gospel offers. For you now are not only hearers of the gospel, but also its preachers, its heralds. Express by your actions the word of God, which your lips will proclaim, so that the Christian people, enlivened by the Spirit, may be a pure offering acceptable to God. Then on the last day, when you go out to meet the Lord, you will hear him say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. My sons, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. And so I ask you, do you resolve to be consecrated for the Lord's ministry by the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? I am. Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? I do. I do. Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience, as the apostle urges, and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? I do. I do. You who are prepared to embrace the celibate state, do you resolve to keep forever this commitment as a sign of your dedication to Christ the Lord for the sake of the kingdom of heaven in the service of God and man? I do. Do you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life? And in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you, to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole world. I do with the help of God. Do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ, whose body and blood you are ministers at the altar? I do. I do. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and to my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment.
Please stand. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on these his servants, whom in his kindness he raises to the holy order of the diaconate.
your holy church, Lord, hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church, Lord, hear our prayer. Bless these chosen men, Lord, hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify these chosen men. Mercifully hear our prayers and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing these men we present, for in our judgment we believe them worthy to exercise sacred mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. Draw near, we pray, Almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged but make all things new. In your eternal providence you make provision for every age as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the Church, his body adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new people. And as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your name. And so in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favor on these servants of yours who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the work of the ministry. May there abound in them every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and poor, 
unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct, so that by the example of their way of life they may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a clear conscience, may they remain strong and steadfast in Christ, so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served but to serve, there may be found, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have now become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Peace be with you. 